Well, my friend, are you ready to do me the service? Yes. What do you want me to do? I want you to use all your powers and all your skills. I don't want his mother to see him this way. Look how they massacred my boy. Well, it's here. I told you guys you weren't gonna like it. What did I say in the last video I made about Capcom remaking Resident Evil 3? My final reason why Resident Evil 3 should not get a remake is because the fans won't be happy. It's already started, folks. Fans are criticizing the Resident Evil 3 remake hard. We've got people out here already preaching that Jill's redesign was done to cater to the cancer snowflakes. Mr. Nemesis got a nose job. There's already a petition, a petition to have Capcom change Carlos's new design. It's fucking crazy. But here we are, dudes and dudettes. The time has come, and now it's officially confirmed that Capcom has been working on a Resident Evil 3 remake. The announcement trailer came at this year's State of Play, which was teased to be the supposed main campaign to Capcom's latest online multiplayer venture. Resident Evil. Resistance. Which was previously Project Resistance, which we here at Game Somniac were chosen to partake in the beta test. Now little did fans know the footage that they were witnessing was in fact their first look at Biohazard 3. So this is the supposed box art for the Resident Evil 3 remake, which from a design perspective is pretty cool. I will admit the Resident Evil 2 remake had an awesome box art design as well, and the Resident Evil 3 remake seems to be following in its predecessor's footsteps with that fire. Do the kids still say fire? Hey, the kids today still say fire, right? That That's still cool? Alright, right off the bat, we got Jill Valentine, Carlos Oliveira, Mr. Nemesis, all on the front cover. Everyone's looking ravishing with their photorealistic redesigns. Let's talk about Jill, because Jill's redesign so far is banging like a screen door in a hurricane. Jill looks just as sexy as she did back in 1999. Honestly, if you told me that you enhanced the resolution of the original model from the 1999 release, and this is what it looked like, I'd believe you. I mean, that, that actress is hella fucking close to the spitting image of Jill Valentine. Hats off to Capcom, you bunch of classic bastards for finding someone out there who's actually cosmetically Jill Valentine. I'm sure it was no easy task, but the 10 year old me and his puberty salute you. Now looking at the character model, we can see that Jill this time around is wearing a tank top with her trademark tack vest over top of it. It's pretty reminiscent of her blue tank top unlockable costume, a costume exclusive to the Sega Dreamcast version of Resident Evil 3. Now unlike the Sega Dreamcast version, this version of Jill has been fitted with a pair of tight, tight jeans and some combat boots. Now look, I'm one that will constantly preach for remakes and reboots to respect and follow the Swiss material to a T, but I've gotta be honest. Jill looks great and the switch from the tube top to tank top, as well as mini skirt to jeans, is more practical to the situation surrounding the character. I mean, this is a creative decision that adds to the character. It's not something that was just done because women need to be portrayed more modestly in video games. I mean, come on, this is Capcom. You can buy used panties and vending machines over in Japan for fuck's sake. You really think modesty has anything to do with this? Honestly, Jill looks great. I'm fine with it. Look at this kick-ass fan-made poster. Jill's costume here is pretty similar to the remake with the exception of the blouse and the footwear, but even that costume is awesome, and it's a much more practical choice for someone in her situation. Don't get me wrong, Jill's got legs for days, and her boots were made for walking, which is why it was confirmed that Jill's classic attire will make an appearance in the game as DLC, just as Leon and Claire's classic uniforms did in the Resident Evil 2 remake. Moving on, we've got Carlos Oliveira, and man, this guy's been completely overhauled. Carlos is one of my favorite characters in the Resident Evil series, and sadly, Capcom has done nothing with the character in terms of character development since Resident Evil 3. Sure, Carlos has appeared in other Resident Evil works, but sadly, these works were half-assed attempts at retelling the Raccoon City saga that made Carlos the whitest Latin American ever. The name's Carlos. Thanks for saving my ass. No problem. You alone? No, but I got split up from my team at City Hall. We were trying to rescue civilians. She's hurt. Thanks. Good luck. Nemesis a robot.
and Jill a discount bimbo s Daphne from Scooby Doo. Carlos in the original Resident Evil 3 was this boy soldier trying to be a man caught in a shitty situation but always trying to make the best of it. He was funny, he was a flirt, hell! I was a foxy lady and his accent drove me crazy. If there was a hot coffee mod for Resident Evil 3 back then, Carlos would have been smashing Jill harder than you guys smashing the like button on this video. Carlos in the remake looks like a man and a half from the get-go. He doesn't quite look like he could punch boulders in half with the sheer strength of his bulging arm muscles, but he's on his way. He looks like he's seen some shit, fought in wars prior to the Raccoon City incident which Carlos's character in the original game had. One thing about his redesign that I really want to bring attention to is his new hairdo. Look at the box art that PSN leaked. The dude looks like a manga character. It's a look very reminiscent to that of bearded Kenshiro, the successor of Hokuto Shinken from the Fist of the North Star series. It's an awesome improvement and shining example of the much needed character development I've desperately sought after for the character. Honestly, this is one thing about the game that excites me and I can't wait to see where they go with it. Now how could we ever do a video on Resident Evil 3 without looking at the game's terrifying main antagonist? A creature who wrote the book. A guide to shitting your pants. He is the superior tyrant of them all. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about Mr. Nemesis. This guy right here is the reason why I have high blood pressure and a phobia of police station windows. This guy gave me nightmares and is easily my favorite creature in all of the Resident Evil series. Now fans were a bit taken back by the artwork for the Z version of the game, which revealed a more in-depth look at the nemesis. Fans gazed in confusion at the artwork as the images revealed the creature's newly redesigned face. Fans cried to the internet that his teeth were too large in height and square in shape. His skin is now stretched to the point of tearing, seemingly not fitting the creature's skull. But the one feature that broke the fans broke the internet. It was his nose! <laughs> yep, CBS keeps renewing Survivor for new seasons, nobody bats an eye. But Nemesis gets himself a brand new sniffer, and fans start losing their minds! Alright, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's take a look at the Resident Evil 3 announcement trailer that was revealed at the State of Play event just a few days ago, and break it down scene by scene to get a better understanding of what's going on. So when you first look at the announcement trailer, you're met with a timer which upon closer examination turns out to be a clock meant to provide you with a timeline in association with the events of the Resident Evil 2 remake. Now images paired with the time show various observational images such as zombies walking in the streets, zombie dogs scurrying by, bloody footprints on the main hall floor of the RPD, and countless others. In the background we can hear the radio talk show that the truck driver was listening to in the Resident Evil 2 remake as well as some of Ellie its dialogue and what I believe to be some of Claire's dialogue as well if not the mayor's daughter I, I don't know because I haven't finished Claire's campaign nor the survivors DLC for Resident Evil 2 tell me how much of a noob I am down in the comments below after the recap of events for Resident Evil 2 we suddenly see the clock start to rewind until it hits 8 p.m. on September 28th now if you are a true Resident Evil 3 fanatic like myself then you would have already have known by that date alone that this was going to be a trailer for something related to Resident Evil 3 nemesis. And again, Capcom, the crafty bastards that they are, did promote this as the main campaign for Resident Evil Resistance, throwing a lot of people off, but anybody with an IQ above 10 should have saw this coming. The trailer cuts to an unknown character hastily traversing the burning hallways of what looks to be an apartment complex. From the breathing and grunting noises, it's clear to the audience that this is a female character, and it seems that she's being chased by something. Something big. Something big with an hourglass figure. Wait, what? I saw so many reaction videos and streams where people would guess that this was Mr. X chasing after Jill. Like they had guessed that the character was Jill, but they weren't smart enough to deduce that the thing pursuing her was the nemesis. Ya basic. Ya basic. So we follow this character as they run into various rooms, barricading the doors with bookshelves, jumping out of a window onto a fire escape in order to further distance themselves from the relentless creature, only for the hulking nightmarish fiend to break through the floor, literally dropping in on our unknown character. It's here that if you were paying attention, the creature reveals itself to be Nemesis. The thunderous crash sends our character to the floor, forcing them to crawl away to safety. Glancing back, we see the abominable Hell Beast stand up, and if you listen ever so closely, you can hear him say that iconic one-liner. Hey, try not to suck any dick on the way to the parking lot. 
He also pulls back and performs that classic nemesis roar, giving Jill, I mean the unknown character, enough time to get the hell out of Dodge. The character runs down the hallway through fire and flame towards the only door in sight with a bright green and white neon sign right above the frame that reads EXIT. In an action packed moment packed with action, the unknown character jumps through the door, the door exploding open sending the character straight into the wall just beyond its reach. Then, in the darkness comes a voice. Jill, over here! At first I thought it was Chris, I was like, these motherfuckers! Then the reveal! Dun dun dun! It was Jill Valentine this whole time. In an epic, explosive, and fiery reimagining of the introduction sequence to the original game. But here's my first problem with the game. Jill has been running from this relentless pursuer long before meeting up with Brad. So now there's no more suspense or tension for the player to build upon regarding this horrific nightmarish creature that at some point in the game you will have to face and at which point will be pants shitting terrifying. Already they've changed something so small yet so significant that made the original game a fucking masterpiece. We then cut to an aerial view of the city as it succumbs to a fiery death, with Jill questioning the production value of Umbrella's work. Then we're introduced to the newly redesigned Mikhail, or as Jill likes to call him, Mikhail! 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 It's also in the same sequence that Murphy Seeker is revealed. In the original Resident Evil 3, players met Murphy at the pharmaceutical company's sales office, where Murphy is killed by either Carlos or Nikolai depending on the player's choices. The trailer then cuts to some back and forth banter between Jill and Brad regarding their new acquaintance, with Brad professing that the creature seems to have a hard-on for the only two stars members left in town. Brad seems to have a bigger role in the game, this time being much more involved, assisting Jill with evacuating survivors, and of course providing us with exposition. However, the one thing that bothers me about Brad is that his pants are too clean. He hasn't shit them yet. In fact, I'd go as far to say that this new incarnation of Brad has a pair of balls on him. He talks tough. He's not phased by anything around him and he's not worried about the nemesis at all. Like, what the fuck, dude? Ah, There's so much wrong already! One pleasant surprise is the introduction of Nikolai. With the exception of Outbreak where he looked like a fat George Clooney, Nikolai's been portrayed pretty well and proper in just about every other RE game he's been featured in. I love how Nikolai calls Jill out for being a bleeding heart. He sounds like a dick. They don't need a bleeding heart like you getting in the way. He acts identical to the original character but with some modern day flair. It's good. It's awesome. The rest of the trailer shows off the new Carlos Oliveira and other USBC members like Tyrese Patrick. Jill gets into a car wreck and if you're quick enough you might even spot the MA-121 Hunter Beta. One sequence worth mentioning is the ending of the trailer. No, 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 not the post credit scene but we'll get to that. No, I'm talking about the scene where Jill looks into the mirror and sees images of her as a shadow of her former self. Damn! I just went all the way back to Resident Evil 1 with that reference. It's an interesting sequence and fans immediately associate it with the moment in the game where Jill becomes infected at the clock tower. However, there's really not enough evidence to support that just yet. This could be one of the many changes the developers were talking about. It could be a new nightmare or hallucination at an earlier point in the game or something entirely different. After the title card, we're presented with one final sequence which shows the Umbrella Corporation prepping an unconscious nemesis before his allocation to Raccoon City. Dialogue from an unknown narrator can be heard explaining the core value values, commitment, honesty, and integrity that essentially make up the Umbrella Corporation, which is irony because the Umbrella Corporation cares about none of those things. I'm gonna be honest with everyone, I'm not excited for this game. Now don't let the fact that I've already pre-ordered the collector's edition for the PlayStation 4 undermine my previous statement. But you have to understand, Resident Evil 3 is my favorite video game ever of all time. My dad got it for me when I was 10 years old, it was my first Resident Evil game which got me into the series. It's an awesome game, it's the perfect blend of survival horror and action adventure gaming. Something that Capcom has not been able to replicate with any other game in the series. I hold this game close to my heart just as many fans do with Resident Evil 2. And yes, the Resident Evil 2 remake was a great game, but I had no emotional investment in the original game, so I didn't give a crap what they changed. With Resident Evil 3, there are certain events that make the game what it is, and I don't see those plot points being recreated in the remake. I see them being replaced. And sadly, you just can't outdo what was already done in the original, so why try? What are these events you may be asking yourself? Well, I'll tell you. Number one, the introduction of the nemesis. In the original game, you meet Brad in a bar after fending off a zombie. Brad looks rough, he's beat up and scared. In a single moment of exposition between the two characters, Brad exclaims that Brad, hang in there. Why isn't someone doing something about this? I didn't know you were still alive, Jill. The police aren't trained for this kind of situation. What could they do? Listen, he's coming for us. We're both gonna die. What are you saying? You'll see. 
He's after Star's members. There's no escape. This scene really sets the mood of the game when you first start playing. You have no idea what the hell Brad is talking about. Between Brad's shrill voice and the pure despair in every note of the game's soundtrack, you know it's not good. Once we get to the police station, that fear that was in Brad's voice takes shape. It's a moment that players are unprepared for. Now in this game, however, Jill's already encountered the nemesis. There's there's no fear, there's no paranoia, no build-up. They've taken this once memorable introduction meant to instill absolute terror into the player and replaced it with a fast-paced action-packed chase scene filled with running, dodging, parkour, and explosions. Michael Bay would be proud. Number two, and possibly the most important in my opinion, Brad's death. Brad is a scaredy cat, he's not a fighter, and there was no way that he was ever going to make it out alive when he first encountered the nemesis. But what was more horrifying than witnessing Brad's death was the manner in which he died. Guys and gals, as sure as the sun will rise, I know Brad will die in this remake, but I know it won't be as memorable as the way he died in the original 1999 release. You see, the cliche thing to do would be to have Brad sacrifice himself so that Jill can get away, which would be totally out of character, or he could be piloting that helicopter that we see go down on the rooftop in the announcement trailer. Either way, I'm I'm calling it now. Brad's not taking a hard throbbing parasitic tentacle to the face in the remake, and if Brad ain't taking a hard throbbing parasitic tentacle to the face of the remake, then what the fuck are we doing here? Number three, also extremely important, Nemesis will not crash through the window in the police station. As soon as I saw the first floor window by the staircase in the Resident Evil 2 remake, I knew that if there was ever a Resident Evil 3 remake, Nemesis would not be coming through that window. Now that's not to say Nemesis won't pursue you throughout the police station. In fact, a popular fan theory describing the destroyed walls in the locker room on the second floor as being a result of the Nemesis could absolutely be 100% feasible. Now if Capcom were smarter, they would have designed the Resident Evil 2 remake with the intention of remaking the third even if they weren't actually going to do that. That way you could show signs of other survivors like Jill or even the Nemesis Nemesis having been there to keep the continuity consistent. Design the window so that it's already broken, the wall around it falling apart due to some large unseen force having busted through that some bitch. They didn't think about it then, and they won't retcon it now. Nemesis will not be making his grand entrance into the police station through the first floor window. Feel free to return those diapers, this remake's looking pretty tame. Now granted, all we have to go on is what we saw in the announcement trailer which really doesn't kiss and tell, or have the common courtesy to give us a reach around. But so far, from what I've witnessed, I gather that this remake will be everything Resident Evil 6 tried to be and more. Yes, Resident Evil 3 was a more action-oriented title within the series, but when it wasn't being an action title, it was a survival horror title. And it was fucking scary. This remake needs to embrace both elements and try to find the perfect balance of both like the original did. And you know what? Nemesis is gonna have his job cut out for him. Now there wasn't much to go on in the announcement trailer, but this Nemesis needs to be fucking mean, angry, he needs to hate the player and come at them relentlessly. If he's just going to slowly shamble over to you like Mr. X in the Resident Evil 2 remake, then just fucking stop, because you missed the point of the Nemesis altogether. In the original game, Nemesis had an AI that was insanely different from anything Capcom had ever programmed previously. William Birkin, Mr. X, the T002 Tyrant, all intimidating enemies, but the Nemesis AI was aggressive, persistent, and fierce, completely new and unpredictable for the time. Not only was Nemesis deadly at close range, but he also had a proficiency in handling weapons, sometimes appearing with a rocket launcher able to deal damage to you from a distance. This new newly redesigned nemesis looks unsettling and scary, but he doesn't look mean, he looks mindless. I need this nemesis to chase me throughout the map in a single go, never stopping. I don't want pre-scripted events or segments that are over in two seconds where I know I'm safe to catch my breath. Real quick, let's address his new look because a lot of people are disappointed with the new design. I don't mind the new design, I think he looks odd. Honestly, when I look at him, I immediately think of Left 4 Dead or Dead Island for some reason. Uh, but again, I'm more concerned with how Nemesis will act more than his looks. But people are freaking out over the new design, and honestly, I have to ask, why was it so hard to just have gone with an updated, graphically enhanced version of the original design. I mean shit, look at Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Nemesis looks fucking amazing here. You could have used that model. Or hell, take a look at this render. It's the original Nemesis in a very realistic style and tone. He looks great. He's big, beefy, looks threatening and intimidating. This new Nemesis looks like he's dressed in a trash bag with caution tape all over him. His tentacles look like plastic tubes and now he has this big plastic thing on the front of him, probably covering a heart or some kind of internal organ protruding from his chest that will no doubt be 
used as a weakness similar to Nosferatu in Code Veronica. I don't know if you guys caught it in the announcement trailer for Resident Evil 3, but Nemesis this time around has an hourglass figure. Yep, no meat for him, just a salad and a glass of water, thanks. Remember in the teaser trailer when I mentioned Jill gets into a car wreck? Where there's a leaked photo from the remake showing the Nemesis standing in front of an oncoming car with a parasitic tentacle coming out of his hand. This at least confirms that the Nemesis will still utilize the parasitic tentacles as weapons just like he did in the original game, and if this scene has anything to do with the car wreck scene in the announcement trailer, then I'm betting that Mr. Nemesis had something to do with it. If you're excited for the Resident Evil 3 remake and this stuff doesn't bother you, then that's awesome. I hope you have a fun time with this title just as much as I did with the original. Understand, I'm the last person that wants a Resident Evil title to fail right out the gate, but Resident Evil 3 Nemesis means a lot to me and my expectations are high. I hope Capcom can shatter my expectations with this remake, and if they do, I will happily admit that I was wrong from the go get but with how Resident Evil 3 has been treated in the past, with Operation Raccoon City and the Umbrella Chronicles, I'm not sold that they are competent enough to remake this title with any value. But again, prove me wrong. But that's it for this one guys and gals, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed our video, please consider giving it a like, or maybe even subscribing to the channel so you can stay updated on all future content. For all things Resident Evil, keep it locked right here at Game Somniac. Bye bye